Hello, this is Gilles Nair. This is the second part of the tutorial how to rehair a violin bow. Today we're going to learn how to make the rosin powder, uh, choosing the right amount of hair, uh, removing the bad hair and making the first knot. You will need the rosin powder to be able to rehair the bow. Uh, you can take a very uh, old rosin, different ones, mix them together, it's not very important. If you intend to use the powder to put on the hair later, uh, then you should uh, take the best quality rosin and not mix it with any other rosin. Place the rosin in the middle of some piece of fabric. Take a hammer and smash the rosin inside the fabric. Now we have the powder we need. If you want to use the powder for the hair, this is not good enough like this. You have to take a fine strainer and you have to pass all this powder through the strainer. Mm, I'm not a maniac, but... Mm, better. Your hands need to be very clean when you uh, touch the hair. After washing your hands, sometimes you lose this grip on your finger and to get it back, you can use this little powder. The screw on the left is one of the screws that hold this block of wood uh, to my bench. And the screw on the right is the one I use to hold the thread that uh, we use to make the knot. Because first, you need to attach the thread to your bench. To make the thread more resistant, you start by making it double. You need to use the most resistant thread you can find. Uh, this kind of thread that uh, melts when you um, burn it, instead of burning. Not very natural, I guess. Pass the thread around your finger. And roll it with your thumb. Then you pull the knot to the end. I know, I guess, what you're probably thinking now. What marvelous nails. There's no magic to it. Manicure three times a week. I had companies contacting me for nail polish commercial. I refused. I work for passion. And my passion is b So you make a loop between two fingers. You take the end of the thread from below the loop back inside. And your knot is done. You place the loop around the screw on your bench and you pull the thread. I didn't use the air gouge until recently. Before this, I was just uh, using my eyes and uh, scale to weight the hair, uh, which is very good, but sometimes you can make mistakes and it takes more, more time to, you know, to put more hair, less hair. Uh, since recently, actually, I'm, I'm using this air gouge. It, it's very working very well. I don't know why I didn't do it before. The reason I believe is because I like this uh, rain man effect. You know, when these, the two speaks are falling on the floor and you can tell exactly the number of them. There is a little less magic about the hair gauge, but it's working very well, it's very precise. And when you have this reference, you can precisely add a bit more, a bit less hair following of, of the, the width of the, the ferrule, if it's a large frog, if the, the person wants more hair or less hair. 
If you need reference, uh, I can tell you what I use, uh, which is more or less uh, 5.4 gram for violin, more or less uh, 6.1 gram for viola, and more or less 7 gram for cello. As an example, when you read uh, 0 0.8 uh, centimeter on the gauge, you know it's going to be about uh, 5.3 uh, gram of hair. I'm talking about the weight of the hair before you put it on the, on the bow. It's a hair just cut out of the hank. There is one extremity of the hair that is whiter, and this is this part you want to put inside the frog. That is the newer part of the tail, the one close to the root. It's slightly more resistant, and you want to have this part where the attack of the player is the strongest. I start rearing the bow from the frog. Uh, there are some people who start from the head. Um, if you are already rearing bows and you know the technique from the head and you don't want to start all over, I understand. But if you are learning how to rehear a bow, do not even hesitate. You will always have a better result with uh, starting from the frog. There's some bad rear from the frog. There's some bad rear from people starting from the head. From two very good rehairs, the one starting from the frog to the head will always be better. I will show you exactly why in the future uh, video uh, when the hair will be inside the frog. Basically, you want to comb the hair always from the larger section. Now there will be all this group of uh, pro head start from the rear hair who will just dislike my video for revenge. Don't get angry, my friend. I didn't say your rear hairs are bad. I'm just saying the result will be always slightly a bit better if you start from the frog. You are holding the hair on the whiter side, using your hand as a clamp. Now what we're going to do, it's extremely important if you want to get a good re-hair, it's to remove the bad ones. The best quality hair you buy, there will be of course less hair to remove, but there will still be some, and it's very important to remove them. You are looking for flaws, some imperfection you might feel on the string, or uh, some hair might break easier. Remember to cut more hair than you need, so after removing some, you arrive to the perfect amount. You should apply some rosin powder where you're going to make the knot, uh, so it makes the hair like stick together and you have less chance to um, have the hair going out of this knot. As you try to make something tight, it could be difficult to uh, hold the thread in your hand, so you have to learn how to make a good grip. This is a slow motion of a movement I do in 12 milliseconds. Now at real speed. And now we will finally make that knot that will uh, tie the hair together inside the frog. You need to make a loop around the tight thread. You do it by rolling the loose thread with your thumb around the tight thread. If it makes no sense, just don't listen to what I just said and do what you see. While the thread is in tension, pull the hair up and down to make it more tight. And now you start to make some turn around the hair. Always with a great tension of the thread. As the mortise of the frog is uh, longer than uh, on the head, you are more free to decide how much turn you want to do around the hair. You have to apply some pressure with your index finger to be sure the thread is not losing the tension. Make a loop around the thread. Pull it down. Move the hair to make it more tight.
and make a second loop. Make it tight. Now it's made. Hmm. My thread turned black. That's weird. Now you burn your very unnatural thread. It will melt and secure the knot. You're burning the excess of thread from your cut. Uh, be careful, of course, to not burn the actual knot. Now you cut the hair near the knot, not too close. Being careful to not burn the thread, you have to burn the hair. So the extremity of the hair uh, will make some little ball by burning with bigger than the hair itself and cannot go back inside the knot. And one last thing now, which is to apply some rosin powder on the knot and make it melt inside the flame. This was the second part of my video tutorial how to rehair a violin bow. Thank you for watching.